Today, I'm going to show you how to create a custom light and dark mode toggle on your websites. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my video on a UI UX topic, but you could watch this full UI UX course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetra.com. So today we're going to take a look at how to integrate and create a light and dark mode toggle for your user interfaces. So first, the why. Well, it may be late at night. People don't want to be blasted in the face by all that you know bright light. Uh, maybe their, their battery power is low on the phone. Uh, so there's any number of options. Basically, you're just giving people an option and that's always a great thing. Uh, so we'll be doing this with native CSS variables and also custom data attributes in HTML to do achieve this. And I'll show you exactly how to get up and running. So for today's question, do you or will you go going forward in your UI designs by default have a light and dark version? All right, let me know in the comments and let's get started. All right, so first, before we get into any code, I wanted to just quickly preface this that uh, when you're doing this in terms of from a design perspective, a, a design fundamentals for your user interface, you're going to want to hop into something like Adobe XD, Sketch, Figma, whatever you use for your UI design tool, and make sure that you plan your colors beforehand during this mock-up slash prototype phase. Uh, it's just going to make your life much easier. As you can see, I knew this was going to be really simple. So I just did this very quick layout of, you know, kind of basically what I wanted with exception to the toggle I, button. I didn't need to put that here. But really having the light version and your dark version, that way you know exactly what it should look like is going to be a lot easier. So you can grab the color codes or whatever in the hues um, so that you can just easily integrate them once you have it ready to go in your front end. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in Visual Studio Code, which is a free code editor by Microsoft, and I have a blank folder called dark. So go ahead and create a folder, open that fol that empty folder up with Visual Studio Code. We'll create an index.html file, hit exclamation point enter. Let's close this welcome tab here. We're going to link up a uh, style sheet, CSS main.css. Let's create that CSS folder with a main sass file you'll need the sass uh, extension so you can click watch sass and you just go here click live sass and you can install it and then reload same thing we're also going to use a live server so type live server you'll find this one install that as well because we're going to use that momentarily all right so let's go back to our index.html here and save i'm going to get rid of this and hit control plus just to get this a little bit bigger. I want to make sure everybody could see what I'm doing. And we're initially just going to get started by writing out the HTML that's necessary for our layout. So we'll have a div class of container. Inside of here, we'll have an h1 element. I light slash dark mode. We'll have a div class of toggle container and inside of that we're going to put um, an input field with a label by the way this toggle that I'm going to be using along with the CSS to style it appropriately is coming from this particular code pen right here by Marcus Burnett I just wanted to mention that you gotta give credit where credits due, right all right so after that all we have is a single paragraph so p i'm going to type lorem and i believe this is also a uh, extension that you can download for lorem ipsum just fake generated text and that's all the html is for our situation so just before just so we don't forget uh actually we'll style up the this later let me uh, the, the toggle button rather let's go uh, back to control b to get here let's right click and open with live server and of course, it's already open on my other instance here. Let's open with Live Server now. All right, and there we go. So let's style this up a bit. 
All right, so to get started, we're gonna take the HTML element and we're gonna define our variables within this HTML element itself. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just gonna set the height to 100%. Font family will be Montserrat, of course. Uh, it's just, you know, it's already installed in my system, so I'm not gonna bother in, uh, importing it. You could use whatever you want. Um, we're also gonna do a display grid, align center, oops, align items center, and then also justify items center. And this will center vertically and horizontally the container class that we have in here right there. All right, so let's save that. We'll see a slight update. Looks like garbage still. Um, let's define the initial variables, and these variables will be for the light version by default. All right, so uh, we're using just straight up vanilla CSS variables here. We're not using SAS variables or anything. We'll just type in uh, hyphen hyphen, and that's the way you start with a, a native CSS variable, and then the name. We'll call it BG for background color. And I'm gonna choose FC, FC, FC. It's extremely light, almost white color. Uh, we're gonna do a BG panel. And the BG panel is going to be for this element right here. And that will be EB, EB, EB. And again, it's just slightly darker. And then we're gonna have uh, a color headings. This will be for that blue primary H1 element. And then also color, and we'll say text. Bunch of threes, six threes, there we go. And so that's all for this stuff right here. All right, so again, we save this, nothing's gonna happen. These are simply variables at this point, they're not being used anywhere. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll set our body. And by the way, we will use this again, HTML, to uh, rewrite or overwrite these variables right here for dark mode. But we're going to do that a little bit after, uh, once, once we get this looking like the light mode should. So let's just do this real quick. So body is going to set the background color. And we're going to use var. And we're going to pass in our BG panel. Not going to tell much of a difference. You can see it's slightly um, light or, or darker. It's not white. And that's uh, this code, this color. No, that's this one right here. Nope, I'm wrong. Sorry, that should be BG. There we go. Almost white, but not quite. Then we're going to go to our container. So our container element is going to see, say, let's see, background color will be set to a variable of BG panel here. And we'll see if we save. There it is. Still looks like garbage, so let's add some more properties. We're going to do a margin of 5 EM, a padding of 5 EM, and a border radius of eh, 15 pixels or so. There we go. Now we're getting closer. And we're also going to do a display grid um, just to structure real quickly. Um, this element here, there'll be a toggle over here, and then this stuff right there. You could use Flexbox as well, but I like the grid. So we'll do display grid. Grid template columns, we'll have two at the top for the title at 80% and then our toggle, our toggle switch will be just auto. And then grid template rows, it's just gonna be auto and auto. So I have to have two rows and then we'll just do, do grid template areas. That will be our title, we'll call it. And then the switch for the second column and then for the second row, we'll just say content and content. Uh, the content will take up both of the columns here. All right. So let's save that. There we go, getting a little bit better. We'll be overwriting this um, with that code pen information shortly. Let's close that out. And inside of uh, container, we'll write our H1 rule set. That'll be margin zero to get any rid of any margin. And we're gonna make the color our variable. We'll do color headings, not headsings, but headings, there we go. And that's it for that one. And then our paragraph, I didn't like the way the paragraph text looked um, in terms of the line height and stuff, a little bit close. So uh, let's go ahead and adjust that real quick. So our color is gonna be our variable of color text, which is defined up above. That's our last variable. Our grid area, 
we're going to define that as content, which is right here. So now if we save this, you'll see it now extends all the way. And almost done here. I hate when it brings that up every time. Uh, and then we'll say font size, make it a little bit larger, 1.1 um, EM units. Line height will be 1.8 EM units. And finally, margin top, we'll push it down a bit to 2 EM. And there's an error. What am I doing? No, there's not an error. It said there was an error, but OK. All right, good. So it looks pretty close to what I had in the mock-up, except for this ugliness. So let's fix that real quickly. I am going to not type all these rule sets out. Instead, I'm going to simply paste it. All right, so you can check out the code pen for this tutorial specifically, and then you could paste this all in. So this is what it is. It, we have an input type checkbox. We have our label. We have this information. And if you wanted to, you can make your background colors um, for this tech checkbox based on uh, a light and dark. I found that it worked pretty well, but I did use a variable right here, uh, this part, this color headings. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Let's just save this. And now we can see our toggle right here. And if we click it, it changes to this blue color. That blue color is right here color headings. I thought it looked well uh, for both of them. But of course, as we click this toggle, the, the interface isn't actually toggling back and forth yet. So we still have a little bit of work to do to make that work. So we're going to come up here. Let's go back real quickly to our index.html. We're going to put data theme is light by default. And then we're going to copy all this right here, we're going to paste it. And we're going to say we're going to put in a specific check to see if the data theme is equal to dark. All right, if so, we get rid of all the stuff, we don't need to overwrite that. We're going to overwrite this information with whatever colors you have defined for your dark version. And those happen to be and this time, I'm not going to sit here going one by one, I'm going to just Paste that right there. So you can see all the colors change. So if I hover over this color for the background, we can see it's almost white, but not quite. This one is almost black, but not quite. So it's up to you in terms of how you want to change the colors for your dark theme. You just want to make sure all the design fundamentals are there in terms of uh, you know contrast and, and readability and all that stuff. Uh, so let's save that. Again, nothing's going to happen at this point unless if we come out here and we change this to dark manually, there we go. It reloaded automatically and it works. But we need to make this toggle button control that behavior and toggle back and forth between light and dark for the data attribute. So let's make this go back to light. And we're going to do a little bit of vanilla JavaScript. So I will do script tag here. Let me get rid of this uh, control B. And inside of here, we'll get our checkbox. So if our checkbox will equal document dot query selector. And we're going to get the input that is equal to name equals theme. So the name property is theme right here on our input. All right. Then we'll say checkbox dot add event listener on change function and we'll put in here we'll say if this dot checked all right so if it's checked it means we're going to be toggling it to dark and before we get to that part because i don't want this to be too verbose we're going to create a separate function because we're going to also have to do an else and kind of run the same code a couple times and what we'll do is say let trans equals arrow function here and we will say there we go. Sorry about that. And then we'll say uh, document dot document element. And that will just get our, us our HTML tag class list dot add. And we'll put in transition, we'll call it. So we have to create a CSS transition. And what that's going to be do is going to allow us to add a transition property to every element that changes um, in the HTML uh, document. 
and will the transition property will allow it to kind of just gradually change uh, over maybe like a half second or something from light to dark. And you'll see what it looks like with it and without it. Uh, so we'll do window.setTimeout. And in here, we're going to say document dot document element once again, dot class list dot remove transition. And we'll remove it after a period of about um, one second. All right, so now we can call trans. And then we can say document dot document element once again, right there. And we'll set attributes, the data attribute. So data theme, as we called it, we'll set to dark. And then we'll say else, and we'll just copy that code real quick. No, both lines rather. Probably could have passed in this as well and just give yourself a variable to put in there or a parameter, but um, I don't know, I'm lazy. So we'll just say light for that value right there. All right, so now let's give this a shot. All right, great. So now you can see it's in a an abrupt immediate change over. So if we want that this stuff to work, this transition, we have to define a transition property. All right. So that will look like this. All right. So we will save this and pause if you need this, by the way. And also, I got this here, along with this general uh, methodology for uh, structuring this whole project with this tutorial right here. And it is uh, quite elaborate. Um, and, and also, there's some other goodies in here in terms of using HSL. Uh, and perhaps H HSLA you could even use to set up um, dark, darker or lighter variations of your primary colors or your hues. Uh, so definitely check this out. I'm going to link both of these in the description of YouTube. Uh, for those who have more robust layouts, obviously what we're doing is very simple. Um, so now we got our transition. Check that out. How cool is that? So everything's changing. Our text is transitioning from this light to this dark color. Uh, we did change up this right here to be a little bit lighter uh, in the CSS variable. So this is a little bit of a darker, more contrasting blue for this background. And then this is light. This is made just a tad bit lighter because I thought there wasn't enough contrast. Uh, so it's up to you in terms of how you want to structure your light versus dark colors. All right, so hopefully you found that enjoyable. If you did, as always, make sure to subscribe. And for today's question, answer it in the comments below. Do you or will you start giving users the option to toggle between a light and dark mode? All right, see you guys soon.